Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be simplifying a trigonometric expression. This expression contains tangent and pi over 8 in radians. You know, some folks, when I write things in degrees, they want me to use the degree symbol, but I don't like using degree symbol. That's why I use radians here. So there would be no confusion. Anyways, pi over 8 is, if you want to write it in degrees, that's going to be 22.5 degrees, which is a semi-special angle. Anyways, I'll be presenting two methods. Let's start with the most more painful. I mean, let's start with the first method. Okay, right. So my first method involves the following. First of all, notice that we know tangent pi over 4 is equal to 1 because that is 45 degrees. So we have an isosceles right triangle, so on and so forth, right? Now the question is, can we find tangent pi over 8 from tangent pi over 4? And the answer is yes, we can. And actually, we can do it in two ways. Well, that's kind of like 1A and 1B maybe, but I'll probably introduce one of them and talk about the other one briefly. I don't want to make it too long. Anyways, so my method in was of pi over 8, I want to get pi over 8. Pi over 8 is half of pi over 4, right? So I do need a half angle conversion. I can do it with a formula, but I can also do it with a little bit of geometry. Draw a right triangle. And don't be scared when I say geometry. A lot of people are turned off like, what? I'm not good at geometry. I hate it. Well, okay. I'm not a big fan either, but this is easy. Come on. You can do this. Trust yourself. Okay. Great. So I do have an isosceles right triangle. Do you see how isosceles and right that is? <laughs> okay. That's not very isosceles, but who cares, right? So anyways, this is pi over 4. This is 1, 1, and figure is not drawn to scale. You know those warnings, right? Okay, great. So that is my isosceles right triangle, kind of like half of a square. And I'm, what am I doing with this, right? Well, I want to get pi over 8. How am I going to get it, right? Well, I'll be extending the base as much as the hypotenuse of the other triangle, which is root 2. Why am I doing that? You'll see in a little bit. Now, one of the most important theorems, I think, in my opinion, in geometry is, by the way, this is also pi over 4, is the exterior angle theorem. Why? It is so powerful. I don't know. So what about these angles? If this is alpha, this is also going to be alpha because I am dealing with an other isosceles triangle, which is not right, which is kind of obtuse, right? Anyways, so what is alpha? Well, I can find alpha using the exterior angle theorem. How does that work? Alpha plus alpha equals pi over 4. So the sum of the two interior angle measures equals the exterior angle measure, which is not adjacent to the blah, blah, blah. Anyways, so you get the idea. So alpha plus alpha is, notability, stop acting up, 2 alpha is equal to pi over 4. And yay, this gives us alpha equals pi over 8. So this angle right here is pi over 8, and I do need the tangent of it. Why do I need the tangent of it? Because the expression is asking for this, right? So I do need to know what tangent pi over 8 is, at least with the first method. So how am I going to find it? Well, by using the definition of tangent. Very easy, right? Well, tangent is opposite over adjacent. Therefore, it's going to be 1 over root 2 plus 1. I wanted to write the radical first because I'm going to rationalize the denominator. And that's kind of fun to do. Let's do it. And when you do, you're going to get a real nice expression. So tangent pi over 8 from here is going to be root 2 minus 1 divided by 2 minus 1, which is 1. So I don't need to write it. The answer is going to be root 2 minus 1. Hmm. That's kind of interesting. Tangent pi over 8 is 1 less than root 2. One, root 2 is about 1.4. So tangent pi over 8 is about 0 0.4 something. Okay. Hopefully that makes sense. Now, what am I going to do with this? My goal is to evaluate this expression, tangent pi over 8 divided by 1 minus tangent squared pi over 8. Oh, that is squared. Great. Well, we're just going to plug it in, right? Easy. Come on, you can do this. Okay, 1 minus, okay, I need to square this. Let's do it. Now, this is going to be the answer. Yay. Let's simplify it. How would I simplify this? I need to square it. So, a minus b quantity is squared, a squared plus b squared, that's a 3. 
minus 2 root 2. A little bit of math, algebra, manipulation, whatever you want to call it. 1 minus 3 is negative 2. So it's going to give me 2 root 2 minus 2. And yay, it is factorable. I can just write it as root 2 minus 1 divided by 2 times the quantity root 2 minus 1. And yes, you can cross out root 2 minus 1, leaving you with 1 half. So the answer must be 1 half. Hmm, that's interesting. That kind of looked complicated, but the answer is simple. That's what happens a lot of times with math. Like you simplify a gigantic expression at the end, you get 1 or 0, and I'm like, did I do this for nothing? Yes, if you got 0, you did it all for nothing. Anyways, let's talk about the second method. My second method is... I think, I think you're going to love this because it is fantastic. In my opinion, I could be exaggerating, or of course I do. Anyway, so my goal is to evaluate this expression, and I'm going to do this without finding tangent pi over 8. Oh, by the way, I didn't talk about the 1b, but maybe after talking a little bit about second method, I want to talk about 1b, if I don't forget, because it's kind of related and I don't want to give it away. Anyways. So I want to evaluate this without finding tangent pi over 8, because that would be first method. So how am I going to do it? Well, if you look carefully at the expression, and this is a question, by the way, I ask to my students, like in my trigonometric classes when I was teaching, obviously. I kind of stopped teaching, right? Um, I was introducing this problem, and everybody is, everybody is looking at it like they've never seen something like this, because they've never seen it before. Anyways, I talk too much. But here's the thing. This looks like tangent to alpha. Why? Because tangent to alpha is 2 tangent alpha divided by 1 minus tangent squared alpha. If you didn't recognize it, too bad. You need to know your trig formulas. And it's all about formulas. Okay, great. So this is tangent to alpha, but what does that have to do with my expression? Well, here's the thing. If you divide both sides by 2 here, you get uh, tangent alpha divided by, and of course I'm switching sides, right? Kind of being sneaky there. But that's what it is, right? So tangent alpha divided by 1 minus tangent squared alpha can be written as half of tangent to alpha. This is awesome. Why? Because look at our expression. That's what it is. Wow, beautiful. So now I can replace alpha with pi over 8 on both sides. And it's going to give me tangent 2 times pi over 8, which is pi over 4. Yay. Divided by what? Oh, that's a 2. Yeah, exactly. No trigonometry at the bottom. Great. So, but I do know tangent pi over 4 is equal to 1 because that tangent 45. Come on, guys. We just talked about the isosceles right triangle. So the answer is 1 half. That's pretty much it. But let's briefly talk about the 1B. What was 1B? 1B was basically, instead of drawing a right triangle, you could also use the tangent, you know, 2x formula and set it equal to you know, um, what am I talking about? Okay, tangent to x in this case is 1. And then if you solve this equation and look at the positive solution, that's going to give you tangent pi over 8. And this brings us to the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.